Welcome to the Wall Podcast, where the goal is to motivate, inspire, and share success principles. I'm your host, George Almasri. Thanks for joining me today. I interviewed Dan McMullen, who's a high school teacher, a real estate investor, and the host of the Cashflow Crew Mastermind Group. And on this episode, we talked about his childhood, how he grew up playing sports and followed in his parents' footsteps by becoming a phys ed teacher. He talks about flipping a switch at 40 and how his mindset completely changed at that age and what caused that to happen being intentional with his time, so making sure that he's partnering with other people on his investment properties, what his goals are, how he plans to replace his teaching income or teacher's income, I should say, and then also how far he plans to take this. Uh, there is a lot of good things in here, I, I think, for, for people that are currently working a full-time job and think that investing is impossible. I think this is a great one for you. He's Dan's just a regular guy who realized that he didn't want to just wait for his pension, didn't want to follow in the footsteps of many other teachers and wanted to create the life that he wanted. And so he found that investing in real estate and some of these other methods would really help him accelerate and get there. So I think you guys are going to enjoy the episode. Um, if you want to discuss some opportunities that we have, we have a, a really cool 11 unit building that's off market right now in the Niagara region. So if you'd like to get some information on that, make sure to reach out to me. You can go to welloff.ca and my contact info is there. And I uh, just, again, want to reiterate that I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the support we've had over the years for the podcast. If you or anyone you know would like to be a guest on the podcast as well, just uh, again, feel free to reach out. So there you go and enjoy the episode. All right, I'm here with Dan. Dan, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really excited to be uh, be here and chat. Great. Um, so tell me about your childhood. That's how I like to start off. Tell me about where you grew up and some memories you have. Yeah, uh, great childhood. Uh, grew up in Markham, Ontario. Really, um, you know, played sports. I have a brother and sister. Uh, so really, really fond memories of my childhood. Uh, both my parents are high school phys ed teachers. Uh, which is rather interesting because I am also uh, a high school phys ed teacher, and we can talk more about maybe that in a second. As far as you know, how generational programming certainly uh, carries carries over. Um, yeah, spent lots of my summers up in a cottage in Halliburton, Ontario. So really fond memories of there. Still have that family cottage and still use that uh, quite often. So um, yeah, yeah, very very fortunate. Awesome. I feel like phys ed teachers were always the coolest ones. Like all the students, you know, you don't necessarily like all your teachers, but it seems like most students like their phys ed teachers. Yeah, we're in a Would you agree? yeah, we're in a pretty good uh, a pretty good position being being high school phys ed teachers because you know we get to we get to play and have fun for the most part, and and students really like our class. Uh, so we're at a, certainly an unfair disadvantage when it comes to uh, maybe the popularity rating of 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 teachers. Um, yeah. but yeah, no, I, um, very fortunate to work in a, a great school with great people. And we, you know, I, we really have a, a, a fun time, um, teaching. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, also your, like your classes are generally a little bit easier to pass than most of the other ones, right? You know, it, all, all it takes is effort. You just have to come and do, you know, just do what we're doing. And, and for the most part, we, we, we really try and make it as fun as possible. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not hard to pass my course. <laughs> For sure. Um, so is it just, I, I know this isn't really about real estate investing. We'll get into that in a, in a minute, but, um, is it tough to find a position as a phys ed teacher? Is there a lot of demand? Cause I know in general, uh, finding a teaching position is hard, but, um, what's it like for your for your uh, phys ed classes? Yeah, it would definitely be, this is definitely one of the uh, more sought after jobs to be a high school phys ed teacher. So uh, certainly has its perks and its advantages. Um, but uh, it, you know, it, it's a very exhausting job at the, at the same time. But yeah, no, I would definitely say like, I, I, I made it my focus to be a high school phys ed teacher and it, you know, going through the journey as a, as a student and then into university and even into my early working years, I had to really dedicate my life to this position. So um, I knew I wanted to be a high school phys ed teacher in grade nine during Take Your Kids to Work Day, which a lot of us remember. I knew I wanted to do that. And um, it took you know the better part of, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years to actually uh, achieve that goal. So um, 
you, whatever you put your mind to, hopefully you will achieve. And that, uh, that worked out fortunate for myself, but I would definitely say like, um, I would say teaching jobs are, are tough to come by, but, um, the landscape is definitely changing. So anyone who is interested in becoming a teacher, d- definitely don't be discouraged by, um, that sentence thinking that they're hard to come by. Definitely dedicate yourself to do it and, and you will achieve it. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's get into the real estate part because I know growing up in school, I don't remember any teacher ever telling us that they invest in real estate. Um, no one ever really, I don't think teachers generally really think of that. I think it's mostly like focus on your pension and uh, that that's the general thinking. Would you agree with that? A hundred percent. As teachers, we are, we're given a fantastic opportunity where, you know, if you, if you are, if you want something very, very comfortable, teaching will provide you that with its salary and with its pension. And um, that is very good in some senses and it's very bad in other senses. So uh, the good part is you don't have to worry about your finances because you have that paycheck coming in, you have your pension that you're going to rely on. However, um, turning off your brain and not having a, a growth mindset when it comes to your finances is something I have learned has been very, very important. Uh, we need to have a growth mindset when it comes to our finances. And it took me until I was almost 40 years old to say, hey, I'm not uh, capitalizing or I'm not achieving my best potential when it comes to my financial literacy by just not learning more about how money works. So... Um, I started to learn more about finances and it really opened my eyes and I've hit the ground running ever since. Do you feel like there was a particular moment or something that sparked that thought in your head? I would say a a number of things. I would say turning 40. uh, I'm not sure. I'm sure a lot of your listeners can resonate. Uh, 40 is a, a funny age because we've We've done a lot with our life. We've generally gotten married. We've had kids. We've had, you know, we own houses. And you're kind of asked. You're, you're saying, okay, I'm 40. What's what's next? And um, so also, it was every time your house comes up for a refinance, you always seem. You, we always have this preconceived notion that we're going to pay off our house in 25 or 30 years. But it, it seemed like every time my house came up for refi, I wanted to pull money back because I wanted to supplement my lifestyle. And I started to think to myself, wait a second, like if I keep refining, I'm never going to pay this mortgage off. And maybe that's exactly what these banks want is me never to pay it off and me having a continuous payment cycle. So then it started thinking like, maybe I'm doing something not wrong, but maybe other people are doing things different. And you start to look around at, um, you know, whether up in cottage country and you see these these beautiful cottages, or you start to see people like just people living a different type of lifestyle. And you start to wonder, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm making six figure salary being a teacher and I'm, I'm doing great, but like, there's not a whole lot left over after I paid my expenses and whatnot. What are these people doing differently that I'm not? And I started just going down that, um, you call it wormhole to, to explore. And it's incredible what you find. For sure. Yeah. Um, so tell us a, a bit about that journey. What did like what got you started? What, did you start reading books? Did you start listening to podcasts? Yeah, it was really a thought. It was a thought of like, hey, you know that real estate. Y- y- you hear people into real estate, and you're like, that that's a pretty good idea. You know, it makes a lot of sense to have a, a rental property and have an investment property. I didn't really know much about it. I bumped into a colleague, uh, a great colleague, at um, a teacher meeting called Heads Meetings, or and. I asked him what he's up to and he said that he owns six rental houses in in Hamilton. And and I thought, I was like, oh my God, that's fascinating. So I started picking his brain uh, saying, I'm interested in doing this. And he sent me away with podcasts and I just started consuming podcasts as quickly as possible, more and more and more and started reading. So read all the traditional books, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, and just really couldn't get enough content. My And my confidence started to really, really grow. And then I started talking to people saying, hey, I think I'd like to buy a house. I think I'd like to buy a rental property. And it's amazing when you put things out, out there, what comes back. And my brother, he was also interested. My best friend was interested. And long story short, next thing I know, we kind of, we have a, a partnership, the three of us, and we're on the uh, the path to buying our first rental property. So that was so how long? Yeah, 
Uh, sorry, I was just going to say, how long did it take for you from that moment where you had that thought in your head about starting to look at rental properties as an option to actually purchasing your first rental? It was about four months by time, uh, by time. Yeah. So by, and we moved quickly. So it was May when, uh, I had that meeting with a friend and then it was, we, we purchased our property on Labor Day weekend, um, in early September and we closed end of October on our first student rental. Cool. And did you did you work with a, an investment focused realtor, or did you just call the the person you know? That that's the great thing, uh, and I like to use the the word copycat. I was just a copycat on what other people were doing. So, I I asked my friend who already had the the rental properties. I said, "Give me your whole team." So he gave me the brokers. He gave me the real estate agent. He gave he gave me all the, the playbook. So I just opened the playbook and and started working the playbook and. Um, it was fantastic. So I didn't have to reinvent really anything. So for any of your listeners out there, that's just go, just go connect or try and be around someone who's already done it and copy. Sure. I think that's how all of us really end up doing what we're doing. Like I, I noticed that as you get more involved with investors, if you start going to meetups, um, investment groups, you see that everyone's kind of connected and learning from each other or sharing contacts or that kind of thing. So it's a very tight community. And I find that almost everybody is willing to share and to help others. And I, you, I'm glad you brought that up. It's an abundance mindset. There's enough pie for everybody. We don't need to, we don't need to hide our secrets. We need to share our secrets. And I think that's the mindset that uh, investors had have. Um, and that's why I really, really enjoy my time with, and being around other investors and why I'm trying to spend more time with investors. It's just that positive energy of helping each other out, which is fantastic. So now, now, okay. I think I saw in the notes that you own three rental properties. Is that, is that yeah, correct? Two student rentals up in Peterborough, Ontario and, and a duplex. Okay. So at this point in your life, how do you feel about pensions and about the traditional teacher's mindset? It's definitely changed. Um, because I don't know if I will, I will continue teaching until my pension is ready. Um, my pension is, is there, but I won't hesitate to now that I'm in the investor mindset and I'm taking initiative responsibility of my own money. I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to not say retire or change professions because of my pension. So yeah. I have the confidence that I can acquire and manage money now on my own uh, and not have to rely on that. And that's one thing I, I see in the in the teaching profession, which I really I, I feel bad about is there there most teachers are fantastic. They are fan fantastic. They are working hard, but sometimes towards the later part of their career, they get they get tired or they lose interest and they they stay in teaching the last maybe two, three years, four years just trying to acquire that pension because the pension's locked in um, and th that it can be problematic. Yeah. And that's not good for the teachers or the students. A hundred percent. And that's, and that's something I've been really, um, I have, I have uh, optimism that I can hopefully start to, to help change um, in a podcast that I'm coming, that I have coming up. And we'll, we'll talk more about that um, in the coming minutes here. Sure. Um, so now that you are an investor, are you sharing this with other teachers at your school? And are they asking you questions? Are they um, kind of curious about what you're doing? Or is it, are you open like that? Yeah, I, I, I'm completely open book and I, I want to, I've had success. So why not share our success with other people? Um, so I've been definitely telling people what I've been up to and they can see what I've been up to. And, um, you know, some of them actually uh, purchased their own rental properties. Uh, we've, uh, started creating a, a mastermind group together to, to help each other. So it definitely, uh, there's been a real shift in, in our mindset and, um, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to share and help as many people as possible. Very cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, so you had, you had mentioned um, that you own three properties. Do you find that you have, you, you had to go through a lot of challenges to get there? And, and if so, can you share? And uh, I'm sure you had a, a, an idea of what your life might look like as a rental property owner. Does it, does it meet your expectations or is it a little bit different? 
No, it's about it's about on point. I really have a good mindset around it. Um, there, we we have to go and we're self managing our properties, and I think we're we're happy that we're doing that because no one's going to take better care of your property and your investment than yourself. Um, so that's been really important to us and it's been very, very successful. I like going to my properties and I like working on my own business. So I have that mindset like, Hey, if something needs to be taken care of at the investment property, I don't mind going because I know I'm going for myself. It's for my own business and it's going to help my own business. Certainly there's challenges. There's small challenges along the way. Like we're, we're going through one right now with one of our tenants. Uh, we, we, we advertise as no pets in our house. We have a student rental with eight bedrooms and we try and do no pets because, you know, if everyone had a pet, uh, we would be, it would be busy and, you know, allergies would be involved or, or whatnot. So one of the tenants has brought a pet and we're, and it's essentially declared that it's a it's a service dog and it's a working dog for them and they can provide a doctor's note and so we're we're respecting that and we're working through the process with that but now when we're going to show the property um we're having to say hey you know it was pet friendly now it's not and so it's you know all these little challenges that you may not uh foresee come up but it really is around the mindset of how you deal with with those problems so we're navigating that uh right now so that's a small example um, once the tenants are in and the property is being built, or sorry, the once yeah. are, are you? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, sorry to cut you off. I was going to say, are you finding it challenging at this point to manage being a teacher and also being a landlord at the same time? You, uh, I call it uh, teacher by day, investor by night is kind of the the slogan. Yeah, it's certainly. I'm a I'm a, a father of three, uh, so trying to be a good parent, a good husband. Uh, I coach kids on the weekend. I really try my best being the best teacher I can and then running the this side business. My biggest thing is I cut out time wasters. So I really, I don't watch a whole lot of TV anymore. Uh, I really am very intentional with my time. And um, so it's amazing how much time we have if we, if we're intentional with our time. So, and that's a decision that I've made um, intentionally. Well, that's, that's an interesting point. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Um, being intentional with your time. What does that mean? Like, where do you squeeze in being a landlord and going to do a site visit or to take care of an issue at the property versus uh, spending time with your kids, for example? Yeah, you really, so the, the first thing, what's good about uh, this, the site visits and, and the rental properties is I am with a group of two other people. So my, my brother, Jeff and best friend, Ryan, we do it together. So we all take turns and we're all happy to kind of uh, do what we need to do. So if I have a, a kid's hockey game that I need to go to, I have a family event. One of the other guys is, is going up to do that. So for definitely if, if for your listener, I would say do this as a team. It, it makes things much, much easier. And I would rather have three properties with a team than one property by myself. And that's just for sure. divvying up the responsibility. And then when it comes to being intentional with your time in order to be a, you know, a great husband, uh, father, it's scheduling. So it's like, okay, when we're looking ahead the next two weeks, I'm marking down when I like to go on a date night with my wife. I'm marking down when the kids' mm-hmm. hockey games are or um, what's happening. Like tomorrow I'm taking my boys to the boat show down in Toronto. I've had that on the calendar for a long time. I've told them about it. They're looking forward to it. So it's, um, it's really plotting out and putting it on the calendar, um, events first. So you don't get bogged down when other things, um, come into your life that you don't want. If that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's great. And, um, it's, it's great that you discovered, the idea of partnering with other people early on, because I could say myself, when I started investing, I kind of had this mindset, like, I don't really want to share the pie with anyone. I want to just own this for myself. And this way, long term, I can have this asset. I don't have to ask anyone questions or, uh, you know, get permission to do anything with it from anyone. But I think as I've been investing longer now, it's become clear to me that it's really important to have partners for, for multiple reasons. And also just the the uh, growth is much faster as I'm sure people have heard a million times if they've listened to podcasts. Yeah. And I think we're, we're all going to get there. Like we're like, I'm going to reach my, 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 my short-term temporary financial goal or like it's, it's going to happen. And whether that happens by yourself or whether it happens with people um, and I'm just a people person, I want to be around as many great people as possible. So I definitely 
agree with your sentiment and what you, what you had to say there. Um, so how far do you want to take this? Do you want to get to a hundred properties? Do you want to just reach a certain cash flow and replace your income? Uh, what, what was your intention when you started doing this? And, and has it changed? Yeah, what was my intention? So when we first started out, the agreement that we made was three houses in three years. So back in 2019, the summer of 2019, we say, hey, why don't we do three houses in three years? And why don't we do one house each? So I, I have one of the rentals in my name. My brother has one in his name. Ryan's got one in his name. And then we have a JV agreement uh, in the background that takes care of the, the legal aspect. Where do I want to get to? Um I would love to get to five houses and where I can refi a house every five year or every year for, and then keep rotating. I think that would be fantastic. Um, I would like to, my, one of my goals is by 2024, I want to uh, replace my teaching salary. So I literally want to, I love the idea of becoming a lifestyle investor. I'm reading the book, lifestyle, um, a lifestyle investor. So you literally, your investments take care of your lifestyle. As long as you can maintain the lifestyle that you're living right now, you get to choose what you do, what you do with your time. So yeah, I would think scaling up to five houses, I'm good. And, um, but also another part of that equation is certainly the infinite banking process with whole life insurance that we'll, we'll talk about. So that's another kind of, um, something different than real estate, but, um, uh, is very much impactful. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. Um, just curious about replacing your your teacher's income or your salary. Is that something that you're you you'll find you'll be able to do with the student rentals? Because generally, student rentals provide higher cash flow. So I know a lot of cash flow investors like to go down that path and and just collect that income and, and kind of supplement their their uh, salary that way. We really like the student rentals. Um, we 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 really like them. We're there's so much need in all of the university towns for for student rentals. Uh, Peterborough is great. It provides licensing and it's very, it's very investor friendly. So yeah, I think uh, doing a couple more student rentals would be, would be really, really great. I don't know if uh, five student rentals split three ways would be enough to, to get to a teacher salary on a consistent basis, especially if you are, if you have repairs and maintenance and whatnot. Um, but I think other type of investments that I can, um, throw my hat into the ring would help supplement that. And it's not that, um, it's not that, you know, Oh, if I get to the teacher salary, uh, and replacing that it's see you later, but it very much is, uh, opening up your world to different possibilities with your time. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah, let's, let's dive into the infinite banking concept. So tell us a, a bit about that and how you're using that to your advantage. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been doing it for four years now. Um, it was brought to my attention back when I first started doing, or it's first starting the idea of having these real estate houses. And um, really, I know that you had Jason Lowe on here. I, I went back and I looked. You had uh, Jason Lowe on one of your podcasts, and he did a great job of sort of talking about it. So it's using dividend paying, participating whole life insurance policies to create a family bank. And so it marries very, very well with real estate because with real estate, we have a lot of gross income that is coming our way on a monthly basis. So if you can imagine, you know, I have three, I have three rental houses and I have student rentals and there's a fair bit amount of gross money that comes my way. So am, what are we able to do with this money that comes into our system before it gets it has to go back out to pay the bills. So um, infinite banking is about creating your own bank. So we're buying these policies and we're, we're building up a cash reserve and he, Jason Lowe called it an aquarium. So we're building up our aquarium by funding these policies. Well, I'm able to build up these aquar this aquarium with my gross rent. And as I need to, as I need to pay bills, Instead of I, I'm then going to my aquarium uh, and loaning against this money to pay the bills. And so I can pay mortgage, I can pay utilities with these policy loans. But then what's happening is a month later, I'm getting new cash flow and new gross rent that I can pay back the policy loan and then take more policy loans to 
uh, pay back, pay the mortgage, pay the utilities. So it's really uh, this uh, movement of money that's coming into my system that I'm able to take advantage of and start building these uh, insurance policies. Yeah. And so you've been able to use that in combination with some other strategies to help accelerate your um, the growth of your wealth and also to help you reach your goals of, again, retiring or replacing your income and then obviously at some point refinancing your property so that you can continue to rotate and pull money out and use that's that. it right so you're just you're so i'm essentially creating my own dan mcmullen or mcmullen family bank um by with these insurance policies and if you can do it properly do it slow slowly but properly uh you're gonna have this this fantastic tool that will help you in the future. So, you know, between the rental properties, between the infinite banking process, which I'm implementing in my life, I've done some stock option trading. Um, I mean, lately invested in Bitcoin or in cryptocurrencies, but want to learn more. So I'm just trying to uh, diversify and learn as much as I can about these asset classes to best create my wealth. Uh, it's, it's great that you're doing all that. That's uh, amazing. I'm sure you're an inspiration to a lot of the teachers and the people that are around you. And, and speaking of uh, being inspiring to the people around you, what do you hope your kids are going to get from watching you become this investor and um, grow your wealth and all that? Do you hope that they will continue the legacy kind of like you continued your parents' legacies by becoming a, a phys ed teacher? Yeah, I'm just, I'm laughing, George. I, we're gonna have to edit this out, but I, my daughter just came down. So, <laughs> um, uh, so I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to ask you to go back upstairs and see mommy. Okay. Okay. All right. There you go. Um, sorry. I hope you have an editor on this. Uh, yeah, sure. But I don't, I don't want to keep okay. that's, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> sorry. The, the yeah. question was about, about my own kids, right? Yeah. yeah so, passing on uh, the information and, and uh, how you're inspiring them potentially. Yeah, it's really, really important. Uh, it's really, really important to me to really teach them financial literacy and really sort of uh, teach them the, the foundation of, of what, we, what we're doing. So um, I love the analogy, A students are A students for a reason. And B students and C students are are students for a reason. People who create wealth uh, are wealthy for a reason because they're doing things differently than than people who do not have that. There's there's discipline, there's lifestyle, there's habits that are built in to money that you need to learn and do. And that's what I've tried to be a student of in the last four years about how money works well and best. And that's what I'm really going to try and, and create uh, with my own kids. And, and then here's another thing I think that's really, really important. It's not about, to me, it's not about um, creating a massive amount of money. It's about lifestyle. And it's about um, living the best experiences that I have, uh, that I can with my family on this earth. So um, it's being able to supplement my income in order to have those lifestyle experiences is so important. And I want to share that with them. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. You mentioned A, B and C students. Um, I, I know this might be a little controversial cause you're a teacher, but uh, I don't know if you've read the cash flow quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. Certainly have. And yep. In, in the, uh, in the opening of that book, he mentions how the, the schooling system is basically designed in a way where you are rewarded for making less mistakes. So you, you get A's for making less mistakes than other students. But in real life, you are, in a way, rewarded for making more mistakes. So the, the school system is kind of teaching people not to be wealthy, not to become wealthy in a way, uh, which I found really interesting. I never thought about it like that, but I kind of do agree with that. Um, if you're too afraid to invest, too afraid to get into something and maybe lose a little bit of money, you're probably going to be stuck in mediocrity for the rest of your life. I, I 100% agree with you. And I think actually that potentially that A student, B student, and C student analogy might have been Robert Kawasaki's analogy. I might have taken it. I'm not sure. I can't re really remember. I absolutely agree with you. I think the school system, um, it, it, in, I think it needs a complete overhaul. It's um, cell phones, uh, the AI technology that's coming out um, is, is drastically changing. We students are just concerned about they're they're concerned about marks as opposed to learning, and yeah. uh, we, you need failure to learn. 
So we, we, something has got to shift in a sense where we need to encourage students to take more risks and learn how to fail in order to succeed. Because in life, um, we're all learning uh, through failure and, and, and that's important. So I'm glad you brought that, that up because I, I, I think about that often and I do, I feel there's going to be a, a needs to be a real reform in our education uh, policies and system. Out of curiosity, not that it's completely relevant here, but uh, do you feel like other teachers in general would agree with you on that thinking? Or do you think that most teachers today would probably still agree with the old school system and, and way of teaching students? No, we can all feel it. We can all, we can all definitely feel it. And we're trying to, we're trying to make as much change as possible. Um, it's just hard when the, the public education system is so large and there's so many people and there's so many, um, and there's so many different types of people in a sense where you're trying to meet the needs of all learners. Um, it's just change is very, very slow when you're dealing with massive systems, sure. uh, as opposed to, you know, For say sure. small private schools who could change on a dime. Um, these massive yeah. provincial education systems are harder to change quickly. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, let, why don't we dive into this group that you mentioned to me, which is the cash flow crew mastermind group. Yeah. Tell us a little yeah, bit. Yeah, really excited about this group. So we've been meeting for about uh two years now. We started over COVID. So it was it started with uh, I became a um, member in like a small little uh, options trading group. A lot of real estate investors over COVID got on this sort of stock option train because I guess we were all locked down and we all had a little bit more money because of money was very, very cheap back then. And we decided to learn how to trade stock options. And um, I, I kind of thought that we were in just a chat group and I thought, you know what, maybe we can expand this to beyond just stock trading and we can start talking about real estate, Bitcoin, lifestyle design, whatnot. So I, I just got a bunch of emails and I said, Hey, I'm going to do the zoom call and let's, uh, let's meet and start hanging out. So once a month, um, we had these calls and, uh, People would jump on the calls and we'd bring different guests on. We had Jason Lowe come on. We had some Bitcoiners, um, Jesse Berger come on. And uh, it just sort of evolved to this organic great group of investors who get together on Zoom once a month. And we're, we just we talk and we help each other. And it's um, a fantastic, tight little community. We welcome anyone new into it. So I'm hoping your listeners will reach out to me and say, hey, hey, Dan, I'd love to be a part of your, your Zoom group, Cashflow Crew, um, and come and hang. We're actually doing our first uh, in-person a hangout uh, this Sunday. We're going to Casa Loma. We're doing an escape room, and then we're going to the keg for dinner. So it's just it's my it's my intentional, deliberate action of trying to bring like minded people together and uh, and learn and grow and have an abundance together. Cool, uh, that's awesome. So if somebody wanted to get involved, we'll include your information in the show notes. But do you just want to say what would be the best way for them to reach out? Yeah, Dan at cashflowcrew.ca uh, is my email. And then uh, my Instagram, Dan McMullen Lifestyles on Instagram would be would be fantastic. So those two, two methods. And um, something really cool from the Cashflow Crew is um, – I've start, I've started, we started recording a new podcast. Uh, the new podcast is called Beyond the Bell, Lifestyle Design for Canadian Teachers. And I met the person that I'm doing the podcast uh, with, her name is Anuja Pereira, on Cashflow Crew. So she, she reached out and she started uh, coming to these events and she really kind of liked my message and, and who I was about. And she says, you know what, I think we need to start making content together. And she's a real estate agent in the Mississauga area. And so We've um, we definitely we formed a relationship where we have like minded and, and hoping to bring uh, you know this great lifestyle design for for Canadian teachers. We want teachers to live a, an intentional, happy, fantastic lifestyle. And I think a lot of people um, or a lot of teachers don't know that the power that they have when it comes to whether it leveraging their salary or their knowledge or their skill set. So it's trying to unwrap and bring that out with people. I really like that uh, name, Beyond the Bell. That's really creative. Did you think of that, or did you have somebody? I think, think it that? was it was either Anuja or myself. We 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 battled uh, back and forth trying to figure out uh, a name, but Beyond the Bell. It's not it's not during the bell. It's after the bell. It's what what we do with our time, and um, 
you know, ha- happy teachers are going to, are going to be, are going to make students happy because they're going to be vibrant, energetic, excited. And we need more of that. I love that. Well, good luck with your, uh, your podcast, with your mastermind group, with your investments, with everything. And, um, do you feel like there's any last things you'd like to share or anything we didn't cover? Yeah. Um, I've been a, a guest on some other podcasts, uh, Andrew Hines, and I've been on Rob Brakes, Breakthrough Real um, Breakthrough. And what I've really, really enjoyed is people reaching out to me via email and just saying, "Hey, I heard you on these podcasts, and uh, I would love, I'd love to connect to have a phone conversation and sort of pick your brain." And um, so, I would love people to connect with me. Just reach out. Let's have conversations. I'm always willing to help. Um, there's lots of abundance and enough for us all. So reach out, let's hang. Cool. And while you do reach out to Dan, make sure to also leave us a review. That would be appreciated. Five-star review on the podcast would be great. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for uh, for joining me today. I know you're busy with the kids and you've got a lot going on. So appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks so much. It was awesome. Awesome to be a guest. Thanks for listening to this episode. Your support is truly appreciated. And if you can share this with a friend or family member that might benefit from the information, remember our goal is to motivate and inspire others to take action and to build wealth and to become well off. Enjoy the rest of your day.